to another garage hangs. Uh, we're not in the garage. I thought I would uh, try something different. You guys can see some views of Great Northwest up here. It's kind of cool. You can live just around the corner from that view uh, and not pay a million dollars for it, which is a plus. Um, today's garage hangs, what I wanted to talk about um, is Modern Legends. Like, what is that? Uh, I'm not talking about the channel. I'm talking about what is a modern legend? Um, you know, obviously I'm going to say the E55 is one of them, and I think that it deserves its status. Um, you know, cars have to have little bump, have to have something that makes them unique or special, right? Like, sorry for all these. They don't really. Anyway, we'll cut that. Um, you know, the E55. You know, it had a it had something when it came out. It was stupid fast, made a lot of power. Um, and as that car's aged, it's it's aged well. I think all of us would agree that it you know has a legend status. Like, is it as popular as some of the other platforms are? Um, no. And I think that's a lot to do with car culture nowadays, where just like everything else in society, if it's not the latest and greatest, if it's not a 21 or a 22, you know, whatever it is, it's not a cool car. Um, but I would disagree with that. I would think, you know, cars have to have something, look, an on-ramp after just really bumpy here. Um, discussion today and I just think that those types of cars you know and of course whenever you turn this thing on record then you can't remember anything you were thinking of but I think we can all agree there are those cars we probably have our own you know argument is not the word I would say I would say our, our own opinion on what those cars are because they're probably a little different to everybody but I think that throughout the industry or, or the car enthusiast community there are cars along the way that I think are those modern legends and I think that 
because of the way that society and governments and whatever else is is changing and as you know people continue to give the government more and more control these types of things modifying cars our type of hobby is going to get pinched pretty hard and i think as a result of that you're going to see guys that i think shy away um, from modifying cars there's going to be guys that you know they buy something just to buy it let's hit this on ramp today Bless them, but there's just so little room under these Mer these German cars and Mercedes, and I think BMWs. I remember my M3s were like this. Everything is tucked up under the undercarriage for aerodynamics, which is awesome. But where it's not awesome is when you have a three-inch exhaust system that has like no room to do anything in it. There's nothing going on there. Um, and a couple shops I took it to, I won't name names, but we're just lost, and we're like, we need to cut the mufflers, and I'm like, okay, dude, this is a prefabricated exhaust for this car. I took it to another shop that wanted to charge me two hours to basically mess around with it. Um, I've looked at it, there's just, there's like no adjustment. Um, and I don't know if I'm just not that smart, but I've messed with plenty of catback exhaust, but this one has like no room for error. Um, and it is nearly impossible to get it to line up. So I've been thinking, and if somebody sees this, I might, it might be time to give it up. I really like it. I mean, it sounds good. It does not drone. It's got a good tone. Um, but 
I think I might be in the market um, for a tradesies, a little trade ski. Um, because I have my factory exhaust, I'm thinking it might be time to trade the Fabergé out for maybe some C63 mufflers. Um, or some E63 mufflers, because I am eventually going to do long tubes on this car, so I know it's going to get a lot louder. Um, so if someone's got some C63 mufflers, wants to do a straight up trade for a uh, Fabergé 3 inch cat back, that I can't seem to get to fit correctly, uh, I might be down for that. So let me know. Thanks always for tuning in, guys. I told myself I wasn't going to say that, but it's hard. Now I know every YouTuber says it. Hope you guys have a good day. We'll talk at you later. Okay, uh, behind the scenes bonus. Um, so we did those couple rips on the on ramp there, and uh, I'll put a picture up. I go behind a, an empty warehouse to just kind of take some cool stunner pictures for the internets. And uh, this obviously undercover state patrol uh, car rolls in. At first, I'm not thinking too much because I'm out of my car taking pictures. Um, so the dude sits there watching me take a couple pictures and then says, uh, <laughs> that thing is pretty quick. And I said, I said, uh, oh yeah, it's not bad. I said, you know, this is the old, uh, you know me, I went straight dork mode. I'm like, yeah, these, you know, the old supercharged AMGs get with it pretty good. He's like, oh, I know. Uh, I had you on laser at 115. Um, which, I don't know if I'm buying it because I'm hardwired V1 that is updated to the most um, program or whatever it is. I just passed two more cops. Um, and I never got anything. I mean, you guys were with me. We never heard anything. We had a bleep. A very small bleep, it was K-band, and it never locked on to me, so I didn't think much about it. Anyway, uh, he goes, yeah, man, I had you laser 115 on that on-ramp. He's like, uh, the car moves up pretty good. He's like, I followed you for a little bit, and then I didn't see you do anything else, and then followed you here. He's like, listen, dude, I'm a car guy. Car looks awesome. Car's super quick. He's like, don't do that. And then we took a picture together. So that was pretty cool. So plus one for cool state patrol. Um, I think it's cool when people are reasonable. Like obviously I wasn't doing something I don't know doing. But you know, instead of being just a chode about it, dude was cool. So end of bonus.